What if we were able to colonize Mars? By this point, if you're clicking on this video, you've definitely heard the rumors. You know what people are trying to do and what the plans for future human settlements are. They aren't on the bottom of the ocean or in Antarctica, they're on Mars. Often referred to as the red planet, Mars is the second smallest planet in the solar system and it's the fourth furthest away from the sun. The planet itself is significantly smaller than Earth, with a surface area of just a little less what Earth's dry land accounts for. Being not as big as Earth and also less dense than our planet, the force of gravity on Mars isn't as strong as it is on Earth. The gravity on Mars is said to be roughly only 38% of what we have here on our planet. The atmosphere is also wildly different than anything we have on Earth as well. NASA says the atmosphere of Mars is much thinner than Earth's. The red planet's atmosphere contains more than 95% carbon dioxide and much less than 1% oxygen. People would not be able to breathe the air on Mars. They also go on to say that it is on average more than 142 million miles from the sun. Mars turns on its axis more slowly than Earth does. So a day on Mars is 24.6 hours. Since this planet is farther from the sun than Earth, one revolution of Mars around the sun is a longer trip. So a year on Mars is 687 Earth days. So all in all, Mars is pretty different from Earth in a lot of ways. With all of that being said, and with the fact that Mars is literally 54.6 million kilometers away from us when it's at its closest point, why are we having all these talks about colonizing this planet and potentially even moving there? Also, if we were able to colonize Mars, what's going to happen? Will we all be moving there? Who's going to run this new Martian world? And what does that even mean for the people on Earth? It's time to take a look at what life would be like if we were able to colonize Mars. So to even begin begin to answer this question, we need to take a look at what we would need to do to colonize the planet of Mars. The following list is just some of the basic things that we would need to make Mars potentially livable. Habitats, storage facilities, shop workspaces, airlocks for pressurization and dust management, resource extraction equipment initially for water and oxygen, later for a wider cross section of minerals and building materials, equipment for energy production and energy storage, some solar and potentially nuclear as well, food production spaces and equipment, propellant production equipment, fuels or other energy sources for use with surface transportation, off-planet communication equipment, equipment for moving over the surface like crewed rovers and possibly even Mars aircraft. So yeah, it's a lot of stuff. This also doesn't even factor in that to fully colonize Mars, we're going to need to completely change the environment at some point too. This process is called terraforming and would take a long long freaking time to get to a point where Mars is even remotely similar to Earth. For the remainder of this video though, let's just assume that even though the roadblocks are plentiful and it would be extremely tough, somehow we figured it out. Somehow humans have developed the tech and gotten the funding to be able to colonize Mars and now we're doing so. Well, the first question that comes to mind if we were actually going to colonize Mars is who owns this place? Is it the country that did most work in colonizing? it? What if it was actually a privatized colonization process though? Does the person who funded the colonization own it now? And if multiple parties worked on it together, who gets the largest share of ownership? Well, in truth, this question is going to be hard to answer and has the real potential to result in fighting if we ever were able to colonize the planet. The closest thing that we have to an answer comes in the form of the Outer Space Treaty. This is a space treaty that was drawn up by the United Nations and was signed off on in 1967. 111 countries are currently involved in this treaty. This includes all the major spacefaring countries too. There are several important things that are laid out in this treaty, but the most important for this question are as follows. The treaty says, the exploration and use of outer space shall be carried out for the benefit and in the interests of all countries and shall be the province of all mankind. It goes on to say that outer space is not subject to national appropriation by claim of sovereignty by means of use or occupation or by any other means. And also that states shall be responsible for national space activities 
whether carried out by governmental or non-governmental entities. So basically that means that any space travel and any celestial bodies that humans land on are owned collectively by humans and not by the person who's landed on or colonized said celestial body. That's all great in theory, but I think this is gonna need to change. This treaty may have made a lot of sense 50 years ago when our space explorations were very new and the thought of colonizing something in outer space was super foreign to us, but I don't know if it makes sense now. If we truly were to colonize Mars and turn it into a place where people can live their lives and make it so that there's a society with infrastructure and businesses, well, someone's gonna wanna own that. I find it hard to believe that all of the trifles we have on Earth in regards to resources and money would just vanish the second that we get into space and on Mars. That's why I truly believe that if the colonization of Mars was going to happen in the near future, then this treaty would definitely need to be amended, and it could honestly cause the world to fall into another major space race to see which state can get to Mars first and claim it for themselves. Now, let's assume that humans were civil about this whole thing, which is a big assumption because history tells us that we're most often not this way, but let's just say that for this time, we are. Then the best case scenario would see multiple spacefaring countries band together and then colonize Mars together. Then there would be an agreement in place where each of these countries who assisted in the colonization process are given an area of land that is equivalent to the effort that they put into colonizing the planet in the first place. Basically, paying the country who helped with the colonization process with Martian land instead of money. If this happened, then in thousands of years when Mars is assumingly doing very well, we'd basically have another Earth, a planet where there are countries with borders and several territories that are governed according to their own rule of law. If all this took place, then it starts to beg the question, what is gonna happen to Earth? If we colonize Mars, then does that mean that living on Earth will be a thing of the past? Well, I personally don't think so. The population is growing at an incredible rate, and even though it's truly impossible to predict how many humans there'll be in 100 years or 1,000 years, I think it's safe to say that, barring any horrible disasters, it will be significantly more than it is right now. Well, if it is significantly more than it is right now, then that means we're gonna need more space to put all these humans. Mars seems to be the next best place if we want to continue to grow and develop the species. So I imagine that life on Earth will still exist, but there will also be life on Mars with Martian societies. What becomes really interesting to think about, if this was the case, is how will these two planets interact with one another? Let's say the United States of America has a sizable area of land on Mars. Well, would the president of the United States on Earth govern that area, or would we need a whole new president for Mars? It's obviously very difficult having two leaders run the same country, but I can imagine it would be pretty hard to have one leader governing it as well, assuming half of what you govern is 54.6 million kilometers away. What about something else, like sports? Does Mars have a World Cup now as well, or do they play in the Earth World Cup too? These are the questions that start to pop up, but the answers depend a lot on the state of Mars from our colonization as well. How many people are on Mars? How wealthy are these individuals? Many have theorized that Mars is going to be, at least at the beginning, a planet of the rich. If you think about it, right now, getting to Mars would be pretty freaking costly and the only ones who would be able to do it in the future is assumingly the very rich. But maybe we need to think about it another way. Would people want to go live on Mars? At the beginning of its colonization anyways, there wouldn't be that many people. You'd most likely need to leave some family family and friends behind, and the quality of life would be far different than it is on Earth. So maybe instead of a bunch of super rich people wanting to go live on Mars, the government actually needs to pay people to go live there first. These scenarios drastically change how Mars will function as a planet and what life would be like there, and therefore its relationship with Earth would change as well. In a utopian society, if we were able to colonize Mars, then Mars would just turn into an extension of our own planet. Vacations to Mars wouldn't be uncommon, and maybe we would even have family members that live there. To get to a point like this though, technology needs to be way better. For instance, NASA says that the trip to Mars would take roughly seven months to accomplish right now. I don't know about you guys, but a vacation where the commute would take seven months isn't too pragmatic. We would need to find a way to cut down travel times by a bunch if you ever wanted anyone to be regularly going to Mars. Our governments would also need to find a way to make a new space treaty. The one that's currently in place is becoming outdated very quickly and wasn't 
made with the colonization of another planet in mind. On the bright side, if we take away all these roadblocks, colonizing Mars would be pretty great for humanity. If we had an entire other planet to live on, then the potential for human growth dramatically increases. Also, if we are able to terraform Mars, then one would imagine we would probably be doing the same thing on Earth as well, and hopefully climate change related problems would be a thing of the past. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. What would happen if we were able to colonize Mars? Would you guys go live there if you could? And do you think that we'd be able to avoid a massive war when we're doing this whole process? Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. I've been your host, Nicholas Playlog, and I'll catch you next time.